Hello and welcome to Bangalore. Now, if you ask a young Indian, a young student, what their dream career would be, chances are that a career in scientific research may not top that list. Now, why is that? Science is really about the magic in the world around us. It's about discovery, new knowledge that can help human beings lead a better life. So why aren't careers in scientific research more attractive? And what can be done to make them more attractive for young Indians to actually follow? Well, joining us today to discuss this and make those suggestions is an excellent panel we're very lucky to have with us. Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan, he is trustee of Infosys Science Foundation and also executive vice chairman and co-founder of Infosys Limited. Then we have a hardcore scientist, Dr. Chetan Chitnis. He is principal investigator of the Malaria Research Group of the International Center for Genetic Engineering and Biotechnology. We have Professor Samir Kumar Brahmachari. He's director general of the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research and secretary in the Department of Scientific and Industrial Research in the Government of India. We also have Dr. Gopichand Katragada, more known as Gopi, I think, who is Managing Director of GE India Technology Center. And joining us from New Delhi is Mr. Shashi Tharoor, Minister of State for Human Resource Development and Member of Parliament from Thiruvananthapuram. Well, thank you all of you for joining us at this stage today. Now, uh, Mr. Tharoor, if I could start with you in New Delhi. What is your perception of this? Is science a viable career option, really? Or does it make sense to get into something better paying and more glamorous? What is your perception of the interest in careers in science in India today? Well, it is becoming far more attractive than it used to be. Certainly in our middle class culture, which is where the bulk of graduate students in India come from, we are very much concerned with financial security. This has been deeply embedded in the culture of middle class India for a very long time. Parents want children to get secure jobs with decent salaries, and the prospects of increase, that they'll be attractive in the marriage market, all of this business. It's part of a whole uh, collection of attitudes in our society, which has, for example, ended up privileging government service very often over more adventurous uh, professions and has perhaps kept people away from professions that were deemed to be either less glamorous, less promising or less altogether uh, visible in our society. And scientific research suffered uh, for many years, certainly when today's parents were young people. Scientific research wasn't considered a major viable option. There were stories like Hargobind Khurana coming back uh, from India, being so frustrated by his attempts to work in a government lab that he went back to America and won a Nobel Prize as an American. Similar stories about other Indians. And so the attitude till very recently, till about, let's say, a decade ago, was relatively negative. But now the change is very significant. I think we're seeing people realizing that there is tremendous potential in scientific and research, uh, technological research. They're seeing it not only as something that takes place in government labs, but also in the private sector. Uh, you find glamorous uh, multinational corporations coming in, like GE, who is represented today, uh, and hiring more researchers in India than they have in their parent countries. The same for Philips, the same for IBM. And you're suddenly finding that those of a scientific bent of mind uh, who have a taste for research have far more career options available to them and far better remunerated options and with far better facilities than their parents' generation used to have. So altogether, I would say the, the change is real and it's getting better uh, as, we, as we go forward. So a very optimistic view there from Shashi Tharoor. Uh, Dr. Chinnis, if I can come to you, do you agree with that assessment? Is there better pay now for scientists? Is it more glamorous and do they get better marriage prospects? <laughs> well, uh, I think in general, what uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor is saying is true. There are certainly more opportunities. But if you just look at the numbers, remuneration and salaries for academ in yes. academia and if for research in public institutions is still very low compared to other options yes. in other sectors of the economy like industry. Now, if we want to, over the next 10 years, really build a globally competitive scientific enterprise in India, then I think that issue really needs to be addressed. The problem is most of the funding for research and development in India comes from the government. Yes. And I think having seen the government over the last 20 years that I've been working in India, it's unlikely that the government with its own funding will change the salary structure. 
And so I think we need to find more innovative ways okay. to improve remuneration, to improve salaries. And I think the government is well aware of this. But I need, think we need to see more action from the government. More action from the Let government. Let me come in on that, if I might, Maya. I, I yes, think those yes. are very important points uh, that have just been made. Uh, let me confirm a couple of things. The government is, is spending about 80% uh, of all the R&D money spent in India. And that is odd because in the developed world, in the OECD countries, 75% of R&D is spent by the private sector. So we really need to see much more private sector funding of research in this country. And I see no objection to uh, private sector companies telling Indian institutions like the IITs and the NITs, look, if your students are willing to research such and such, we will fund it. I, I don't see any problem with that. The government is encouraging that. Second point on salaries, they have become more competitive. And, you know, we have new institutions coming up which are my, very much less bureaucratic and more academically free. The best examples may be the new ICERs, the Indian Institutes of Science, Education, Research. I was at an ICER not long ago, and they showed me uh, some of their, the, the backgrounds of their last four new hires as young assistant professors. Every one of them either had a postdoctoral degree or uh, a, a teaching job in a prestigious Western university, Heidelberg, Harvard, Oxford, and so on, and they were all coming back to India because they wanted to be back in India since they were assured they were getting an environment in India where they could pursue their research. Mr. Gopal Krishna, the private sector emphasis has deep pockets. Can the private sector make a commitment to funding R&D, to funding research, not just projects which may earn money, but funding pure research? Would there be a commitment like that? Yes, and this is um, definitely increasing. Uh, there are two ways. One is direct funding to um, research projects. Yes. The second aspect of it, and which I believe is also very, very important, is to create, an, uh, to create icons and celebrate successes okay. in science. I can tell you, unless you have the best teachers, teaching as a profession, research as a profession is respected socially. You know, 50s and 60s we could get when the Clarion Carl of Nehru, the CSR laboratories are built. Why? If you go and see a Times of India advertisement in the 1960s in marriage matrimonial, which you mentioned, <laughs> it is to be a foreign service or scientist. Wow. Okay. You that, know that why? Has changed. <laughs> the reason is these are the only two people who had access to foreign goods. Speaking so of... the daughters were given to scientists. I jokingly tell Professor C.N.R. Rao, Swaminathan, that you were scientists of those era. Today, why should a young man, once comes to Infosys campus, he sees this beautiful place. Yes. He has a wonderful breakfast. Why should he come and join in East of Science Canteen? Exactly. Mr. Gopal Krishna, companies like Infosys, with your huge salaries, with your wonderful surroundings, are dragging people away from pure scientific research. So, see, the solution is not actually to reduce the salary in industry. <laughs> <laughs> Then we, that, that wouldn't get the vote of your fellow Infosys people. No, no. But then we will actually reduce the standard of everything. Absolutely. What we need to do is look at how can we increase the salary on the other side, how can we bring private participation, as uh, Dr. Shashi Tharoor uh, talked about, how can we create a lot more research-based educational institutions. We have very, very few, you know, the IITs and the Institute of Science and maybe some of the NITs, but can we create more research-based education rather than educational institutions where uh, the, the teachers look at this as a factory? Their output is uh, unfortunately no. counted in 